my amazing artist today I'm gonna to be talking about how to mix tints and in the next video I'll be talking about how to mix shades this is our practice worksheet and we're gonna go ahead and get started the first thing I want you to notice is how I have my work area set up we have our worksheet paintbrush syringe ice cube paint tray to share with your team and a little plastic cup of color that you've chosen I also have a water bucket if you need it, a paper towel, and a messy mat. First things first, we're gonna get the middle of our worksheet painted with just what is a regular hue. That's a color that has nothing mixed in, no black, no white added. Okay, then to make a tint, I need to add white. Because I'm sharing with neighbors, I'm gonna use a syringe no needle, no liquid in it. I'm going to insert the bottom just a little bit and pull until the paint comes up to about five, that halfway point. Again, place it in and pull it up. It starts to make a funny bubble sound. It just means that you need to place your syringe suction part a little deeper. I'm going to set this to the side. This is now all the white paint I should need for this activity, even more than that. Um, more than I need. Lays on my messy mat since there's a little bit of a drip. That's okay. According to my tint, I need to have a scoop of color. When I scoop, I think about how I maybe eat ice cream with a spoon and I scoop it out out of my bowl instead of dipping like a french fry would be up and down. When I scoop, I scoop like I'm scooping ice cream that might be melty and I'm trying to balance it on my spoon. So I have a scoop. Have a little bit of extra paint there. And we're gonna make our first tint. It says one little skittle of white. What that means is one little dot. I like to take this and just gently press. Comes out quick. You might make a mistake the first time. It's okay. I'm gonna stir, and this should be a slightly lighter red. If it starts to look like Barbie pink, baby pink, we've got too much white but this is actually working really well. So we want this tint to be only slightly lighter than our original red. All right, now I'm gonna wipe my brush, get that extra white off, scoop, like you're scooping ice cream. I like to twist my brush to make a little puddle. And now according to our chart, we're gonna have two Skittles of white. Barely squeeze, because it can come out quick. There's one. That looked bigger than the last one, so I'm actually gonna stop, stir it, and look at it with my eyes. If I see that it needs more white because it looks the same as the tint that I created the first time, then I'll add more white. All right, I think it looks the same, so I am gonna add more. One more Skittle dot. Again, I call it a Skittle dot just to help you think about the size of that dot. Skittles aren't very big. All right, this is definitely lighter, which is what a tint is. It's making that color lighter. And if I wanted to, I could even go a little lighter on that one. We'll see. Let's do scoop. And now I'm gonna dry my brush if it felt kind of drippy. And I'm gonna do one Skittle, two Skittles barely pressed, doesn't take much at all, and three. All right, let's see what happens. When I stir, I use the tip of my brush that takes up less space. If I were to use the side of my brush, I'd find my paint going over the edges a lot. As I'm looking, for whatever reason, I don't see a lot of difference here. So that means my eyes are helping me view a gradual change in my tints. So now I can go back, my paint is still wet, and make adjustments. So I'm gonna add one more dot here, two more dots here. It's okay that I needed to add more. This is a normal process where you're gonna start and try something 
and then when you see that you need to make an adjustment, make an adjustment. Nothing wrong with that. All right, that's definitely lighter. And this last one should be very light. Let's see, it's looking about the same. Could be that I had some extra red paint there. And it's okay that I'm getting a little outside that rectangle. That's normal, this is practice. So what do I do? If these two look the same, I need to add more white. I would rather you need to keep adding white than to add so much so quickly that you lose the process of mixing. I'm going to tilt to that. It still looks the same. Add more white. That's okay. Ooh, there we go. Yeah. That is different. The one here on the far left, we want to be the absolute lightest tint. And to gradually go back to that regular. We don't want to have big differences, but difference is enough that if you were to look at this with crossed eyes, that you could clearly see the differences. That is mixing shape, that is mixing tints. Tints is the color mixed with white. When you're done with your white, again, I didn't use much, you're going to gently squeeze, don't splash your neighbor, back in. Place this in your water cup, pull up on your paint water, forcefully squeeze, and this starts to rinse. Put it in our cleanup bucket that I'll have with the parts pulled apart like this. This is how you'll turn it into me. artist now we're ready to mix shades shades is going to be the opposite of tints shades is mixing color with black again artists use tints and shades to show an illusion of light to make something appear as if it is lit up or 3d with different sides catching the light to start we are going to do a scoop scoop just like you're scooping ice cream and it's dripping off your spoon get a good scoop there I like to twist my brush to get it all off. And now I'm gonna use the back side of this. We're not using the syringe because with black, we only need a little nerd, nerd candies. So I'm gonna put just a little bit of black and it might actually be too much. Let's see, it needs to look just like a dark red, not any darker than that, maybe like the dark red you think about maybe at Christmas time on a Christmas sweater. Here we go. Tiniest, tiniest little tap of black. Black is very powerful, very strong color, so you don't need a lot. Okay, next. I want my next color to be gradually darker, but not a lot. So scoop. And I still have some black paint on here, so I'd, I'll get a little bit more. Again. That's tiny, smaller than the width of my fingernail. So here's one dot, there's two dots. I'm kind of twisting to scrape it off. It's not a lot at all. It's tiny, 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 like little nerds falling out of the candy box. So I'm looking with my eyes to see that this gets darker than the first shade, but not extra, extra dark like black. It looks like this one looks the same right now. I'm looking at it. I might do a little bit more black, but just the tiniest amount, tiny little touch, just to make sure that this is definitely darker than the other one. If you use a lot of black to begin with, you're gonna see that your color is gonna almost look black. There we go. So we're gradually getting darker. So this one is going to be our darkest. I'm gonna dry my brush, wash and dry it before I get that new scoop of red. Ooh. Here we go. Scoop, twist it off. Now we're up to three nerds of black. One, two, and go back for a third. All right, let's see what happens. This should be darker than this shade. 
it still look like a dark red rather than completely black. If they are not different enough to be seeing the difference, I will add more black. It's okay to mess up. It's okay if you don't get something the first time. This is your worksheet. This is the perfect place to make mistakes. The light is shining on my paper, so I like to tilt my paper a little bit because the light makes my paint shiny. I think let's go a little bit darker on this one. So add another little dot, maybe two dots. Let's see what happens. All right, so mix that in, I'm looking. And I'll go a little darker. And that's okay. It's easier to add more than to get too much and have to take it away because you can't. All right, I am happy with that, I think. I've got gradually lighter. You know what, this one looks like it almost isn't. It's looking a lot like this one. So what I'm gonna do, take some red, mix those back together. Because that paint was still kind of wet. There we go. Now they are three different shades, gradually getting darker. This one should always be um, the shade that's closest to your original color and then gradually getting darker. And that's how you mix your shades. All right, artist. So we've completed our tints and shades worksheet practice. And I've got some examples here just to see what this might look like in some other different colors. But my practice wasn't red. Um, at a different time, I did green as well as yellow. If you practice with the different size of a gemstone down here, great. If you haven't yet, you're welcome to. But let's talk about how this practice is going to benefit for us for our final project. You're going to get to choose between creating a gemstone. I've got two of them here. Or doing a landscape with the illuminated sky. I have a purple tree, mountains, Silhouettes can be just about anything. Ocean, green, a city, even a person. Um, but all that is focusing on is looking at the gradual change from tints to shades in a circle to make it appear as if it's an illuminated light. Whereas the 3D object of a gemstone is to show that the sides of that are at different 3D angles and catching the light. So today I'm gonna show both and I'm gonna do one with the color I practiced, and I may even do a second one with a color that maybe you haven't seen me do yet. All right, the first practice I'm gonna do is, or not practice, but the final project option is gonna be the illuminated sky with the concentric circles. I'm not doing anything with the black paint today, just focusing on that background of circles. And I'm gonna use my red that I've practiced with. The very first thing that I'm gonna do is I am going to dip my brush in white and make a circle. It doesn't have to be in the middle, but that's where I'm gonna start. It's about the size of a quarter. Now, here's um, where things are gonna get a little interesting. I am, at this point in the project, instead of using that ice cube tray, you're gonna have your own personal cups um, because you are gonna use your syringe, but you're gonna be, whoops, you're gonna be filling that syringe up to about that halfway point with your color. You know how to use the syringe, you know how to gradually add your color. Here's my white. I'm gonna add one baby dot of red, just one little drop. And we're gonna see it change into a beautiful pink tint. Already it's powerful. And now that is the first tint. I'm going to use it to outline that white circle. I'm gonna repeat this step. The next tint I make, again, one little drop. Oops, we'll see if I added too much. Easy to do. This one should appear different enough, still light, and that worked out well. 
so it looks like a little bit of a warmer pink, not so light like a baby pink. And just tracing around that first circle. If it's not a perfect circle, it's okay. Okay, one dot, one squirt. This should change, but if it doesn't look different enough, I will just add more red. So it's all about your eyes. How do your eyes see a color? I think this one appears different. We'll see. Mm, not enough. Let's add a little bit more. So we're looking for that change. There we go. All right, get that brush loaded and just follow around over like that. Probably get one more tint, just like we did on our practice paper. Good squirt of red. And after this one, we should be ready to do our regular red. Let's see if this one looks different enough. Nope, let's add some more. It's all about looking and thinking, comparing. How does something look next to something else? We want to see differences. That each of your tints do look different from each other, but that they are gradually changing. And I still want that to have more red, and that's okay. Sometimes I don't know until I actually start putting it on the paper. There we go. I think that's going to be it. Oh yeah, I like that one. It's definitely just enough, just tinted enough. But now, I'm gonna add another good squirt of red. And let's do another one. Let's see what happens when I add it all. Let's do more. So it takes time, as you can see. It's a process that once you get going, it's going to come pretty easy. I shouldn't say easy, but swift. It's um, once you get the color you want, painting that circle is going to be probably the easier step. But it's just getting that gradual change in your tints. All right, I think I'm ready to go to my regular red, so I'll clean my brush. I don't wanna have any white mixed in because it's a color without anything mixed in. Dry it off, set that tint aside, and dip with my regular red. And now that that regular red is beside that last tint, there's not a big difference, there is, we can see it, but it doesn't look like it's sitting next to a baby pink. So that's exactly what we want. Okay, next, shades. Remember, um, it's powerful, black is powerful. So we're gonna go to using our brush, because we've got a little bit more paint. I'm gonna dip my tip, just like we dipped the backside, stir it into my red cup should only change slightly. Black is very, 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 very powerful. There we go. That's gorgeous. Thank you guys for sticking with me. This is a process that even though it makes for a longer video demonstration, I do want you to see how it is gradually built up. There's my red. I'm gonna get another brush tip of black. Stir. If it's not different enough, you guys are learning what to do. Add a little bit more. Add a little bit more. It's okay that you need to adjust. It's okay that you need to change. It doesn't mean you got something wrong. It means that you're learning and making adjustments. Let's see if that's different enough. May not be. I think I want it darker. So we're almost there. We're gonna take this as um, dark as the paper space will let us go, and then we'll let it dry. There we go. All right, the last one, we're gonna get a nice 
dark red. So another good dip of black. And I want it to be even darker. Another dip of black. Mm, let's go darker. <laughs> so you can't believe that it can go any darker. You absolutely can. Mm, let's go darker. <laughs> which actually gets me up to three black mix-ins, which is just what we practice. Mm, I want more. I want more difference. I want a dramatic dark. That's okay. This is going to be exciting for you to see how you can control this color and change it. All right. There we have it. That is a form of creating those tints and shades in a illuminated sky. Okay, last but not least, how do we apply our tints and shades into this gemstone? The great thing about these um, gemstone papers that I got from Teacher Pay Teachers, I'll post it in a link um, if you ask for it, is I um, have guidance on where to put each of the tints and shades based on this image here. So I'm gonna start with a lightest tint. I'm gonna use my syringe, put some of my color in it, and I have my cup of white. My lightest, whoops, that's gonna happen. <laughs> Just wipe it off because we'll cut these out from this worksheet. Um, put one little drop. Let's see if it shakes off. There we go. Oop. You know what? That might be too much. We'll see. But that's, this is going to be our lightest tint. Mix directly into that cup of white. I can even mark my paper right here. There's light. And I can see that that lightest is these two sides right here. So I'm going to fill up these spaces, knowing that the next tint I mix, it's not the lightest, but it will be a tint, needs to be different than this one. Taking my time filling in those spaces. All right, more red. Stir, stir, stir. This one should be more like a regular pink. I'm gonna go ahead and add some more red. Good squeeze there. There we go. And let's compare it. Mm, it could be even more different. Your eyes are looking for difference. Let's see what it looks like now. Okay, that's more different. Um, so this one is gonna be our little piece based on this map. And I'm gonna just bring my brush up to the edges of those black lines. I don't need to feel the need to cover those today. Just bring your tint there. Wonderful. All right, we're gonna switch over to shades. So I'm gonna pick up my color cup Rinse out the white paint on my brush and start adding black. We've got two shades to do. We're gonna do one shade and then a darkest shade and then we'll be done with our gemstone. You guys have done awesome. Thank you for listening and paying attention. Um, I know it's taken time, but it was something, an important process that I want you to see both since you can choose um, either project. All right, so there's a shade. I'm gonna put that one here. And now that I've put this one here, I think I might adjust my middle one. It needs to be closer to my regular red, and that's okay. It's all based on how these colors compare to each other. I'm gonna get my darker shade, more black, stir, just like we practiced. Maybe get another black, stir. Should be 
quite different than the other one. You can look at your chart to be inspired because that's what you practice. You'll be doing your final project with the color that you practice. There we go. It's nice and different, much darker. Okay, at this point, this is where you, if you're not sure if you want to make any adjustments, you can stop and look at it. Um, have a buddy hold it up. Let's see. I think I do want to add some more red to that middle color, but otherwise, I think I'm happy with it. That was a funny noise. And the great thing about paint is once this dries, if you change your mind on something, you can always remix it. All right, artist, you've got choices. I look forward to seeing what you decide.